Hi, Carl Brill here from Western Welding Academy. I'm going to do a little short video on a how-to stick welding, some beginning of stick welding, like breaking an arc, setting up machine, things like that. That'll be good for you at home welders or just starting out, so stay tuned. So we're going to do a little demonstration on some really simple uh, stick welding here for you folks at and even at home, if you're just starting out. First thing before you start welding, you need to have the proper PPE, meaning hood, welding hood, and having the right shade of lens in there too. Normally about a nine or 10 is what everybody's good with. So you need to play with that to see what's best for you. Also having the right gloves that for what you need. Uh, stick welding gloves are, are a little bit thicker. Um, they, they actually hold the heat a little bit better. And having a, 100% cotton uh, long sleeve shirt or leathers will work fine for you. Making sure you're wearing pants and boots, leather boots. But yes, yeah, stick welding is really simple. Uh, I suggest starting off with 7018, 332. It's one of the smallest rods, really easy to control. If you get into the bigger rods, it takes a little bit more ampage, depending on what machine you have at home to even run that. But then you have a lot more metal you need to carry. So 332 is what I suggest for beginners. Uh, just a simple uh, stinger is all you really need. You can get these uh, anywhere, your, your local welding supply store, Amazon, wherever. You know, at least a, a 250 to 300 amp is really, really good. For setting your welding machine for amps wise with a 332 7018 on flat, uh, depending on if you have a Lincoln welding machine or a Miller machine, sometimes they have uh, special settings on there for like crisp or soft or 7018 or 6010. So make sure when you're running 7018, you have it on the correct setting. One more thing when setting up your welder, when you're hooking your leads up, make sure you hook up your finger to the positive side and your ground to the negative side. That's the correct clarity for DC welding. So when you get ready to weld with your stinger, depending on the stinger you use, you got little notches in here in the stinger. Uh, I like to put it about 90 degrees off my stinger. Now, the good rule of thumb when striking this up, a lot of people have trouble with it first starting to learn how to stick weld, is to get it started and to keep it running without sticking it. A good rule of thumb that we like to tell people here at WWA is to strike it like a mat and lift up the rod just a little bit. You need a little bit of room in there for that arc to move. If you strike it like a match and hold it onto the metal, it'll stick every time. If I'm just running beads on plate, I'm just gonna drag it and I like to pull it towards me or drag it towards me is how I like to do it. So let's, let's do it. If it's too cold, like mine is right now, you can adjust, you can stop, adjust the temperature. Now make sure you're about 75 to 85 amps. It really is good for these. We have a remote here, so it's pretty handy for us. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Now she's running real smooth. Nice crackling sound. And I'm just dragging real slowly, watching my puddle. I'm not long working. If you can see that, I'm long working. And I don't have it shoved down in there. You just want a nice, even arc length and keeping your travel speed constant. One of the biggest things that our students have trouble with is keeping it a consistent weld and straight is your travel speed. To start up a rod that's been used, so what happens is, is this will harden on the end. And so it can be hard to start up again. Sometimes what I like to do is just flick that off like that, and it brings that, that metal up so you can arc right away again. Or you can beat it onto the plate till it strikes up. I like doing this a little bit better, so that way I'm not arcing all over the place once it starts up. So a lot of questions that we do get when you're first starting off with uh, stick welding is, why am I getting prosody in my weld? Prosody are little holes in your weld. A few things cause that, starting off with the rod. I like to make sure you drag that rod for a little bit, long arcing it, getting that rod hot. And another thing is make sure after you get done welding, you buff off the weld. You don't wanna run over slag. If you run over slag, 
you're running the chance of getting trapped slag and which in return can cause prosody. So to do that, get a buffing wheel on there or a wire wheel and buff, every, buff it all off nice and clean. Always have nice clean metal that you're working on. That'll keep prosody away for sure. Another thing to watch out for is long arcing. If you start long arcing, it allows oxygen to get in there and cause prosody. Another question that we get a lot of, how do I keep my bead straight? Well, when you're first starting off, the best thing to do is get you a square and a piece of soapstone, draw you a few lines, straight lines, follow those. Now, when you're following those, you're watching the toe of your weld, which is the very outsides of that weld. That's how you can keep things straight is by watching the toe of that weld. Hey, if you're ready to take your uh, stick welding to the next level, man, we got a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, go to applytoweld.com and we'll see you on the next weld.